Hello, hello, my love. So, this is part two. Um, this was supposed to be a live stream, but it got kicked out. Um, there were other plans, and my phone may be ringing, so that may kick me out again, and my phone may die. So, whatever. I don't like this angle at all, so I'm going to have to put this phone right here. So, I was on here, <clears throat> the first half of the video was talking about things that I had acknowledged within myself, um, whether someone else pointed it out, and then I was able to admit that these are things that I have been doing thus far for a long time. And, um, you know, we need to change the way we think about things that we want. And I'm just gonna give a recap for anybody who did not see video part, like the first video. Um, we are the creators of our environment and it depends on our thinking. It depends on how we process information, um, things that we've dealt with in the past, things that we're currently dealing with. We have automatic, um, I guess sometimes I would even consider it we are on autopilot mode when it comes to a lot of things, a lot of our behaviors, you know, things that we're used to doing a certain way and we like things to go our way and then sometimes we set ridiculous goals for ourselves that we can't even meet or we plan to let's say find the perfect person in life but yet you're not even giving yourself time to experience that and and really um have a healthy nurturing experience because you already have a predisposition of what you think is going to happen and if it doesn't meet your requirements or it doesn't go according to plan by a certain time frame that you've already set within yourself then you throw it away with the bath water and you just keep it moving or you kind of just like eh i'm over it type of thing and i notice that i do that and i notice other people do that as well and you know the first thing is to be able to acknowledge that there is something that causes you to behave a certain way um, or to set ridiculous goals for yourself like for instance you know i was in a situation for such a long time that i continued to think that if i did something it would change it but it didn't change because i had to change me myself i had to change my response to said behaviors or certain things that weren't working out i had to change my opinion on those things as well and i had to make the decision that i was no longer going to stand for certain things anymore but i noticed that then i took it to another extreme that now i look at everything and everyone and i have these high expectations or these high standards um that um that i then start ruining things you know and what's important to note is that yes time is short we only get one life we don't know how long we'll be here for we got a lot of doomsday people giving us timelines that you know because of everything going on around us in the world that we may have a year we may have three we may be in revelation we may be this and that um and uh, so a lot of fear mongering is out there. So a lot of people are pushing and rushing and racing to get things accomplished. And um, I don't think I was doing that because I don't necessarily believe certain things about what we're seeing right now. I'm not saying that I don't believe that there is something definitely changing in the world around us. I just don't know if that's what is pushing me to rush and want to get things done quickly i think um for me i set ridiculous goals for myself and then when i don't accomplish them i get disappointed um so for instance i said that by the age of 30 i wanted to have this this and that and then when i became 30 and most if not all those goals had not been successfully executed i was very hard on myself 
and instead of erasing and drawing another a new picture of something more realistic something that was more attainable um, I continued to set such a high standard I set the bar high for myself maybe even higher I said by this age I want so now my goal was like okay by 40 I expect to have this and I'm disappointing myself because I'm setting myself up not for failure but you're setting yourself for unrealistic goals and expectations instead set out small goals that you know you can execute things that make sense and then okay I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna see and however much I'm able to accomplish then I can bump it up and take it to the next level you know like for me I'm like all right at 40 I'm gonna have a million dollars worth of property maybe maybe I won't maybe I'll change my mind by the time that that happens maybe that's not something that I make a priority any longer um, who knows but But, um, you know, it's very difficult and we're very hard on ourselves. And I'm basically coming on here to say it's okay to mess up and to sabotage things. But it's not okay to continue doing it. Especially if you're in search for something or someone to be a part of your life. It is not okay to set an expectation for someone else that you don't even have for yourself or to expect something from someone else that you can't do for yourself. So women out there that are expecting to find a man that has X, Y, and Z, and yet they have nothing to offer, nothing to bring to the table. Men out there as well that do the same thing. They want a woman like this, da 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 but what do they bring to the table? So men and women out there in the dating world, you need to be realistic, and you need to set up goals and, and things that are doable, are attainable that's just something small when it comes to dating and getting to know people but when it comes to career and business you know and education whatever your career path is that you're going to choose it's important that you pick something not necessarily because it's financially beneficial to you as that will come because if you're happy doing what you're doing and you love what you're doing you can make uh you can be successful you can make it um very fruitful but you have to love, for me I say, maybe you don't have to, because there's entrepreneurs out there that buy and invest in businesses that they have no clue about, um, and they just get into them because they are fruitful. They bring a good uh, profit, you know, profit margins on their little portfolio and their stock and all that. So, you know, some people have different motives. But for me, if you want to live a fulfilling, satisfying life, you don't want to go around chasing paper without a purpose, uh, without a goal. And also, you don't want to do stuff that will compromise your integrity, um, will make you regret. Because, I mean, we reap what we sow. The world calls it karma. But literally, it's we reap what we sow we reap what we do what we put out is what we get in return so you have to be very mindful of the thoughts that you're putting out there associated with certain things as well and you have to be mindful of others and how you treat other people because that will in turn be a reflection of you um you cannot treat people poorly and expect others to treat you like you're the bomb.com it's just not going to happen uh, you have to have you know professionalism there has to be respect there has to be like I said before integrity I mean that is such an important word to me um, you cannot do excuse me deal with someone who does not have a moral compass it's just not gonna work um, but in life though you also have to take chances and so you want to make sure that you're doing everything in your life, but you're not doing it based on fear. 
or not doing it because of fear. So for instance, um, someone that I know wanted to get into X, a certain business. They're afraid to get into it because they're afraid of failure. But how can you, how will you know if you're gonna fail if you haven't even dipped your toes in the water? You have to get your toes wet. You have to get a feel for whatever it is you're gonna do. You cannot already come up with, oh, I'm gonna fail or it's not gonna be successful or let the naysayers tell you that it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be for you. Like for instance, too, growing up, I thought, oh, I was gonna be a musician, a musical artist. Um, you know, I always knew I was gonna have a business of some sort, some kind of beauty, fashion. You know, I always wanted, you know, to be in that industry. Um, but I always loved writing songs, playing piano, singing, playing clarinet. Like it was just music and still music to this day. I speak music. I, like someone will start saying something to me and I'll start talking about something and it's a song. It's a lyric to a song and everybody's like, what are you always speaking in song, M? And that's just me because music is just, it is me. It's, you know, who I am. And so recently... So for a few years on and off, people have been asking me to work with them on some songs and be on the hooks, write something for them, come up with a beat, an idea, a theme for a song. Um, and I've worked with a few people in the last few years. And um, I had originally wanted to make my music based on love, positivity, um, maybe even heartbreak. And... For the most part, I really wanted it to be spiritually moved, uh, kingdom music, if you will. Uh, but then I, I took a step back and I decided maybe that's not where I'm going. Maybe that's not what I'm supposed to do. So I opened up yet again another salon after eight years um, being in Kenilworth, closing and then taking a year and a half off to heal physically, mentally, and emotionally, and boom, opening it up again. Um, so now, again, I have been approached in the last few months by people, music, and I'm like, is this me? Am I saying no to something that I'm supposed to be doing? So today, again, I spoke with someone. And they said to me, money is not even a, a concern at this point. Let's just make your music. Let's get something going. And when everybody makes something, we get paid. And I'm just like, so I can't even say that I don't have. Because I don't like to say I don't have. You know, you never want to say you don't have something. Because you're already putting out into the into the energy into the world you're speaking death already into that situation instead of life this is scriptural because people judge me on certain things that i say and whatever i don't even care anymore i'm just gonna speak we speak life and death and what we think is what we produce that is what we're manifesting all around us christ knew it and many other ancients spoke it and said the same thing it is um they call it a universal law, you know? It's karma, mm -hmm. it's you, you um, what you call it? You reap what you sow. So again, when we speak I can't or I don't have, we are already, we are already doomed because we've already said we are not capable of and that's exactly what you're putting out there and that's, guess what? The result that you're gonna get. I cannot do something. You will not be able to successfully do it. So let me give you an example. Sunday, I had been speaking to someone and I was upset. And I come to work, my mind is not clear. Letting my emotions get the best of me. And I didn't realize. So my day started out terribly. An employee did not show up that was supposed to show up. 
I ended up refunding almost $700 worth of services because that employee was a no call, no show, didn't even answer the call, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I said, I have a package with these women that are gonna get services with this said employee. This employee is not gonna come around. I don't offer these services and products. I need to just refund it, give them their money, be respectful, professional, take care of it and handle it. I did, and then I was like, oh my goodness, what just happened? And then the day just continued that way. And I already had my mind focused on it wasn't gonna be a good day until I had decided that, uh-uh. It was about 12 noon when I said, no, this is gonna be as somebody, a customer. Matter of fact, no, it was earlier than that. It was about 11 o'clock. Customer sitting in my chair, she says, boy, um, you're not having a good day at all, are you? I said, no, you know what? I am. I don't I don't believe that. I said I'm having a good day. My day is going to get better. It's going to be a better day. And guess what? Couple of little things happened after that. But my day got amazing. I left here smiling. We had encouraged someone that was going through something. You know, we had our tears, we cried, we shared she left she felt so good every time i come here i feel good i leave here happy that's what they said and i'm like wow that's such a blessing that you were able you know that i was able not because of me but just because i decided to change my mind about how that day was going to go that i was able to impart some good positive constructive you know advice and things that made sense to her that it was uplifting etc whatever again not me it was the energy that was being poured out um the father the heavenly father if you will um the spirit that's within me just saw another spirit and had to speak to them and anyway moving on after i spoke to them i got home I was with my nephew. Oh my goodness, what a great time. I fell off the hoverboard. I wasn't going to let that ruin my day. I said, I'm getting back up. And I got back up. And I was successfully able to ride the hoverboard for this much, holding on to the fence. But I didn't fall the second time or the third time that I tried it. And then I got on a bicycle. We rode bikes. We laughed. He shared snacks with me. Of course, I can't say no to my nephew and some snacks. And then he said, let's watch a movie. All right, we got into my room. We watched this cute cartoon movie. And then my niece FaceTimes us that she had a surprise to share. And of course, I hear in the background, there's this little kitten in her car. She got this kitten and her birthday was yesterday, but Sunday she came by. She tells me, I said to her, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be fine. It's gonna be amazing, da da da. The girl helped her out so much at the store. I only gave her like 20 bucks. She's like, how much do you think I need? And I was like, look, I'm going to give you 20 bucks because that's what she asked for. I said, I gave her exactly what she asked for. She goes to the store. She must have gotten about $100 worth of stuff. They were so grateful, the fact that she found the kitten and they wanted to help her. And it was just amazing. And then my old puppy that passed away, I had this pink bag to put her in. And we were wondering where we were going to put the kitten because the kitten's this big and she didn't want her at her dorm to sneak out of the, the thingy, out of the box that she originally had her in. She had her in a Heineken box, funny stuff. And the kitten's trying to come out, clawing herself out of there. Anyway, so I get this bag and I'm like, wow, I'm letting go of something and we're recycling, repurposing it, we're sharing, we're putting out a good, you know, a good thing out there. So my niece is like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. This matches everything that she has. She was all excited. And it was just such a good, good way to end our day. And I had started out defeated. I started my day defeated. And I ended my day having conquered. I felt like I was on top of a mountain. And it was because I had made the decision that I was not gonna wallow in it. I was not gonna be depressed. I was not going to choose death, okay? I was choosing life and I was choosing it more abundantly. And I was not gonna be defeated. And again, this morning, well yesterday I was kind of blue and today, and then I just keep on the up and up regardless of what we endure 
regardless of our mistakes, we have to own it and we have to change. We have to do better. Um, we have to be healthy mentally, emotionally, in order to do things going forward. Um, if you have baggage from the past, you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it because that deep-rooted pain and that deep-rooted damage, if you will, is corrupting your soul. It is corrupting your life. Um, you have to get to the core and you have to get to the source. You have to root it out. Pluck it out, if you will. Throw it into the fire. Purify it, if you will. Otherwise, you cannot move forward and have healthy relationships. And I'm telling you because I know it firsthand. I am still dealing with baggage. Baggage that I thought that I dealt with and I did not. Uh, it's clear that it's still um, lingering. Um, and sometimes we have cleared the baggage, but we haven't renewed our mind about it. We haven't balanced our emotional being as well. And in order for you to have a successful tomorrow, because I mean, we're not supposed to predict tomorrow or plan for tomorrow, just living every day. But realistically in this world, we do have to somewhat plan for the next day or for at least, you know, some type of foundation, something solid. And so you have to make sure that you get rid of all of that which is polluting you all of that that's weighing you down um so that you can have a successful healthy future it doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect and peachy it doesn't mean that you're not going to run into roadblocks but it does mean that you will be better prepared to handle it emotionally mentally physically too um, it is so important that we're physically well and healthy and that is what I've been working on for the last few years on and off. I've been struggling so much. And um, I had made a decision years ago that I was going to do everything in my power to get healthy and to be fit. And what does that look like to me? That looks like maybe 80 pounds to 100 pounds of weight loss, which many people, when they see me, they can't imagine that I need to lose that amount of weight. I tell them I'm morbidly obese and they're like, what? So I will be going for the gastric sleeve surgery. Um, you know, when I think of people that I felt I felt like I hang with and stuff like that, they say, well, biblically, you shouldn't do that. You know, you can do it, you can fast, you can da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, but there's also a scripture that says if your right hand or your left hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Not literally. Well, maybe it did mean literally, but in my case, if I have to get to that extreme to reach my goal, then I said to myself, well, I'm going to cut a chunk of my stomach out. Not me, but the doctors are going to remove a part of my stomach and it's going to reset my body. It's going to reset the hormones in my body and everything, all the damage that I had done on my body, this is going to help repair but it's not a ban it's not a quick fix this is something that mentally you have to be ready for because it's not going to be easy for me um and for anyone out there that has done it they can vouch for that and they can say this is not an easy journey there's going to be days where you want to give up um but you have to continue transforming yourself and for me this is something that i want to do for my health um because i have pcos I have some digestion issues and they put me on high blood pressure medication due to, I was taking prednisone, that threw my whole system out of whack because it's like an artificial hormone and this artificial hormone sends signals to your adrenal glands to produce adrenaline and to change this and to change that and, and basically I stopped taking them abruptly and that was the reason why I had to close my business, well in part because it ruined my in my balance, my hormones. I already had PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is not just cysts, it has to do with a whole host of things. It causes 
infertility, it causes obesity, it causes diabetes, high blood pressure, Google it, has a lot. Not every woman has cysts on their ovaries and not every woman is obese. A lot of them are skinny as well. Some are anemic, some, and you know what I've realized upon my searching and my studying and my researching, a lot of it has to do with emotional imbalance, traumas from youth. These things have afflicted and damaged our endocrine system or in endocrine, yeah, um, our system. Also, foods, the foods that we ate growing up, government cheese, bougie, I mean, not bougie, um, you know, the dollar menu at McDonald's and all the genetically modified foods that my generation started eating at an early age in the 80s and the 90s, the fruit roll-ups and cereal and all this stuff corn high fructose corn syrup which we're finding out all these negative things about all these different foods so we're now finding out today 2020 what these things were doing to people because they didn't know they just started testing our population in the 70s or even sooner with genetically modified foods and now we're finding out that this cause it causes infertility a lot of women are infertile and they're not able to have children and this is part in part uh, population control but I'm not going to go into that conspiracy theory right now but all this to say this will aid in jump starting the reset to healing but you have to change your diet because I think PCOS is a combination of you're lacking certain nutrients that you're not getting in food. This is the reason why I want to, at some point, eventually go back to my vegan lifestyle, which people are against. Like, oh, you need meat, da 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 Yeah, you know what? Gorillas eat nothing but, you know, vegetation, all natural stuff. They're not eating protein like that, and they're huge, okay? Elephants don't eat protein. They're huge. So that's BS when you're telling me that you need to eat animal meat so that stays in your colon and at some point it put putrefies putrefies and it causes all kinds of havoc and it wreaks wreaks all kinds of havoc in your body so anyway i don't want to go into the details of that but just know i was not meant to be this big 270 pounds there everybody who reads this i mean listens to this i weigh 270 pounds my highest was almost 280 People say I don't look it. It is what it is. Hopefully at some point you will see my before and afters once I get um, started with the surgery. It's set for October 14, 2020. God willing, everything will work out without a hitch. Um, and I will start this journey. Unless for whatever reason, I cancel at the last minute or I find another way. I've been working on eating smaller portions for the last few months. I've been working out. I'm on V Shred, the guy who, you know, is always on your Instagram and always on YouTube telling you about that he knows the way to get you fit and da da da. So I downloaded the app. I've been doing the workouts. The workouts are pretty amazing. Um, unfortunately, I have back issues, so kind of killed me. But I'm going to continue because you just got to keep on swimming like Nemo, keep on swimming. Anywho, so my loves, all this to say, you got to put the right attitude and hat on. You have to do the right thing first here mentally. You have to, you know, process everything in the right way. You have to have a healthy attitude, uh, healthy emotions, all of that stuff have to have a healthy relationship with food too because that could be detrimental on your health clearly emotional eating is not the right thing to do and i don't eat a lot but what i what i used to eat was crap and that's the truth i'm not gonna sit here and say oh i, I eat perfectly fine and i've never eaten bad food no 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 i i like burgers and french fries and i like fast food you know and i do like my rice and beans and my chicken and all this other stuff so it's important to reset the clock in the body get rid of all the baggage anyway guys love you all and i hope that you find your purpose and that you think yourself into a better day and that it will happen for you and if it doesn't happen right away keep thinking it's going to be okay fake it till you make it 
tell yourself everything is going to be okay until you start seeing the results you want to see because sometimes you have to fake it until you make it and that's okay just don't give up hope continue moving forward do not look backwards hey that's a that sounds familiar um and everything is going to be okay i love you guys and i will talk to you in the next one